What's up, guys? Welcome back to Newswave. So we had talked before about those PlayStation 5 faceplates or the outer shells for the PlayStation 5 that one website was attempting to sell. And then Sony came in and said, you can't do that. Uh, there's trademark, patents, all of these things. So they shut them down. Well, it looks like another website is going to be attempting this once again. And they seem pretty confident that Sony will not be shutting them down. We'll go over that here today. Also, Nintendo. Back in the news again, back under fire after another cease and desist order was sent out. They started trending on Twitter and this time it looks like Nintendo's actually shut down sales of a Joy-Con shell that existed to raise money for mental health charity after the tragic passing of Etika last year. Guys, if you enjoyed these videos, make sure the like button helps out a ton. And if you're brand new here, hit the red subscribe button down below. And we're gonna start today with Cyberpunk 2077 and reviews that are now out for the PC version specifically. This was yesterday, they went live and Metacritic we can see here has a score now of 91 with uh, about 44 critic reviews currently in at the time of this recording. I went over some of these reviews a bit more in depth on the second channel Spawn Wave Plus talking about it. And the biggest thing here is a lot of these reviewers seem very happy with the game overall. Like it's setting a new bar for being able to tell a story in a big open world like that, where you can kind of navigate and go through different side quests and missions that feel like it's up to the quality of the main storyline, which is really cool since that's the biggest part about this game is exploring. But uh, the biggest problem we're running into apparently has to do with bugs and glitches in the game and a lot of people are hoping and even expecting for them to be ironed out and fixed by launch, which is just in a couple of days because there are apparently two different patches that are very large. So we'll see after launch in just a few days how all of that does. But that seems to be the biggest problem that's pointed out by like every review is that the game itself is amazing but wow, there are a lot of bugs. Also, I've been working to get an RTX 3080 for a little while now. I'm not like waiting at a website for it to go live or anything, but you know, occasionally I'll check sites and stuff to see if it's in stock and uh, I'll get one eventually. But I have to say, if there are headlines like these popping up a lot, I, it's gonna be a long time. The RTX 3090 is a card that I think is overkill for things that I'd be doing, which is playing games at like 4K or something, but Check this out, this, this is from Tom's Hardware. $340,000 worth of MSI's NVIDIA RTX 3090 stolen in China. And if that doesn't just fit right in with 2020, I don't know what else will now, where you have like Ocean's 11 operations to, to steal full RTX 3090 shipments away from the factory. Like if the factory can't even get these things in and get them out to retailers, I, like, I'm, I'm just never gonna get an RTX card at this rate or a 3080 or a 3090. Now, the problem we're running into is it's already limited supply for either of these cards. And now there's this risk of GTA Online heist being run to take them out of the factory. So I don't know, maybe I'll be able to find one of these cards like midway through next year, but uh, I'm not really holding my breath to be honest now with how Nvidia is handling this and now the factory itself. Oh, and do you remember how we had that trailer played during the Sony event for Project Athea? This was from Square and their Luminous Productions team and we didn't really know what it was. I think at first we thought it was like a Final Fantasy game, but we weren't 100% sure. Well, it turns out that game was one of those timed exclusives that Sony had purchased. This was a strategy we heard quite a bit about with rumors, the like, all of that, that Sony was going to work to put money into games for marketing and trying to keep it off of other platforms. We can see Wario64 tweeted this out right here. Not sure if this is new, but Project Athea is timed console exclusive to PS5 for at least two years. Game will also be available on PC. It says PlayStation 5 console exclusive, then all the way at the bottom. Also available on PC, not available on other consoles until at least 24 uh, months after release date. And so, all right, we don't know when this game's coming out. I mean, this game could come out in like two years, which means that in like four years, it'll be on the next Xbox or well, Series X, Series S. I guess that also means that it could technically be on the next generation Switch then, because we would assume it would be out at that time. But the good news is it is going to PC. However, this does show Sony's aggressiveness, I guess, overall to be buying these timed exclusives in the first place. And it does make you wonder about things like Final Fantasy 16. We already heard about Godfall apparently going to another platform like the Xbox in like a year or so, but yeah, that's Godfall. Project Athe, I think, has much higher potential overall, but we'll see if Sony has any more timed exclusives set up because 
I have a feeling there's gonna be some pretty big ones re revealed pretty soon, and uh, we'll see how people react to that. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's talk about Nintendo and their cease and disorder spree right now. This time, however, it didn't go over so well for Nintendo. I, I don't know if they, like, we had hashtag free Melee that took place, right? I don't know if Nintendo thought that was gonna get swept under the rug after a little while, but that blew up on Twitter, and this certainly blew up on Twitter. Let's go over here, actually take a look at the Indiegogo campaign, where we see the Eticons, custom Etica themed Joy-Cons for charity. Proceeds from each sale benefit the Jed Foundation for teen and young adult mental health awareness for Captain Alex, $36,995. It looked to be about 65% of the proceeds did go to charity. So thousands and thousands of dollars was raised there uh, for charity, which, which is great to see because the others, you, you gotta remember there, there are costs and stuff involved with this, but Great, I would say a great campaign here. Awesome to see all of this. And the Joy-Cons look great, but there is one problem, and that is that Nintendo likes to protect their IPs and they they mean business when it comes to stuff. Again, you've seen the show enough and we talk about this enough. Nintendo is very quick with the cease and desist order if they see something they don't like at the time. Now we can see this tweet here with several images attached from Captain Alex saying, first campaign was not successful. Second campaign was successful. Remaining stock of Joy-Cons were for sale on my Etsy since last year. Nintendo sent me a cease and desist at the end of September. And then here's a picture of me with a bin of all the shells I can't sell anymore. There you go, there's Captain Alex holding up the bin of all the shells. There's also an attached cease and desist order, which is interesting to actually see, by the way. And then we do have a set of trademarks, I assume that Nintendo sent along, showcasing some of the trademarks they feel were breached and that would need to be removed or I guess erased from the design itself, Nintendo Switch, of course. And then the logo for the Switch, Joy-Con with a hyphen, a little Pokeball down there, Pokemon and Grookey and all of this. Now, I've said this before, and I think we should emphasize this once again, Nintendo is not your friend. We've talked about this. Look, they're a corporation, all right? First and foremost, yes, they control intellectual properties that you probably really like. And that's the internal struggle that Nintendo fans go over right now because occasionally this ice cold reality hits and it hits hard that Nintendo is indeed a company that is out to make money first and foremost, and that does include doing things like this uh, as much, as as bad as all of this looks. This is very bad when it comes to optics online. Let's, let's, be, let's be honest about that. You look at this and you go, oof. Do you really need to do that, N Nintendo? Do we have, like, did you have to send that cease and desist for something like this? In Nintendo's eyes, yeah, they had to. And that's because Nintendo, their, their main priority is making money. They're a company. They're not that different from EA, Activision, Take-Two, Sony, Microsoft, when it comes to that. that. That's just how it is. It's not something people like to necessarily think about. But the thing I see here is, a missed opportunity for Nintendo because I think they could have gone about this in a completely different way. Really, they could have. This was all based around raising funds for charity after the tragic passing of Etika last year. What Nintendo could have done here, and it's just, it's so strange that they wouldn't even consider this, Maybe they did and it was shut down. I don't know because we do have different branches of Nintendo and all of this, but Nintendo of America would have, I guess, been in charge of doing this alongside of getting word from headquarters in Japan. But what they could have done, I think, is come in here and said, okay, look, you can't be selling Joy-Con shells, which that's what they were. They weren't full Joy-Cons. Captain Alex, they customized it, looked great. It was awesome. But you can't sell these shells because our logo is on here. How about this? How about we do a collaboration? We're gonna raise money for charity and we'll take the design, we'll put them on Joy-Con shells or even the full controller and we'll do a limited release on the website. So it's not even in stores, anything like that. And we just sell these for a month and we do all the proceeds and put it towards charity. Like that, that I think would have worked a lot better than just sending a cease and desist order that people see as like just cold hearted outright saying, no, you can't sell these and raise money for charity. That's just not gonna happen. But let me know what you guys think about this situation. I think it's something that Nintendo could have said, you know what? We'll, we'll hold on to the cease and desist order this time. We'll, we'll move along, uh, you know, we'll, we'll deal with melee and all of this, but uh, that, that Etsy store selling shells like this for charity, considering there's a lot of really big, uh, I'll say big sellers on Amazon uh, and other, other e-commerce sites selling the Switch logo anyway for profit. We'll let this one go this time. Next up, let's talk about those PlayStation 5 faceplates or replacing the shells on your PlayStation 5 because after we saw PlayStation go up, 
and then go back down pretty quick. The grand opening, grand closing, real fast, right, for that. Uh, but we weren't able to buy just shells that were created for us to just kind of snap into place. So people have been doing other things, very creative things, by the way, painting them themselves, doing custom wraps. It's pretty cool to see some of the stuff that people are currently coming up with to uh, customize their PlayStation 5. But the obvious thing here is people want to customize their PlayStation 5, and we haven't heard from Sony yet about any plans to release custom shells. It's something I'd like to assume is in the pipeline right now, and they're just trying to stabilize the overall overall production and stock in stores currently, and you know, they'll get to the faceplates eventually. But in the meantime, people are still going to try to customize themselves. And now we have a new site showing up, Game Armor, talking about how they can actually sell customized shells for the outside of the PlayStation 5. And if you go over to the website, we can see a couple of different variations. Seems they have three right now. They have matte black, matte red, and matte blue. I am going to go ahead and order the matte black variation here because I'd like to do a video where we pop it on, check it out. I think that'll look really cool with kind of the, the blue light coming out from the inside and reflecting off of kind of the inside of the, the black matte finish there. That could be really, really cool. But you may have some questions. How are they able to do this? Well, here we go again with Captain Alex saying, allegedly, and there's included the PlayStation logo and were sold under a name too close to PlayStations, which could be considered intentionally misleading in courts and therefore trademark violation. Now, it does appear to go a little further than that. They have changed up the shell slightly. So what I would assume here is that either the thickness of it or maybe the curvature or just something's changed enough so that it doesn't fall uh, within the parameters of Sony's patent that they could then say, hey, you got to take it down because that's our patent. I guess if it's changed up enough, you can, uh, you can kind of skate by a bit and still sell them. And they are doing that. Is $35 currently, it looks like it's marked down a bit down to that for pre-order. And these, I guess, will start shipping according to them mid-January. So about a month and a half, they should start sending them out. I'm going to order the matte black one and we'll see what happens. I can do a video on it and it could be really, really cool. But I hope this works out. I hope Sony doesn't show up next week and uh, hit them with their own cease and desist. And I'll keep you guys up to date on how my order goes. Next up, let's talk about Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, the video game, which was an awesome announcement at that Ubisoft Forward. Very exciting to see this game come back after getting delisted, and I, I played it a lot on the PlayStation 3 when it first released, and they even had DLC and all of this, but it was really, really fun when it dropped, a bit after the movie. There's a lot of hype still around the movie, so seeing the game, which turned out to be really, really good, was great. But it looks like we're at the wait a little longer outside of 2020. Remember, originally they said it would be coming out like holiday 2020. Looks like we're going to have to wait until 2021, but only by just a few weeks. We can go over here to Ubisoft's website where it says the game you know and love is coming back on Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and more. Rediscover the beloved 2D arcade style beat em up game inspired by the iconic comic book series and movie available January 14th, 2021. This is the complete edition, which comes with its original DLCs as well. So good to see all of that in one package there, but Ubisoft. We need a physical copy. <laughs> like, this is a game that if you're going to buy a physical copy for a game, it's this one. It was delisted completely. Like, you couldn't get it anymore. So, yeah, I would like to at least have this on the shelf so I don't have to worry if it gets delisted again after all the stuff it's gone through. And I, I think they will do one, hopefully, but it's certainly going to come after the digital version, so we will have to double dip on it. I have no problem, like I said, on that. Just have the peace of mind knowing, okay, the game... I still have it because before it was trapped on like my PS3 and I couldn't play it on my PS4. And if I had it on 360, kind of the same thing there. So again, here's hoping there's a really cool collector's edition or something that comes out, even if like limited run has to pick it up or something. I feel like Ubisoft should be able to do it themselves. So here's hoping, but looking forward to this one in January. In our last bit of news, let's talk about 2021 for Sony for the PlayStation 5 and Gran Turismo 7. Now, we had a commercial that released for Gran Turismo 7 on Sony's YouTube channel that mentioned 2021 as its release year and even at one point, first half of 2021 as its launch window because we're looking forward to 2021 for the PlayStation 5 as being a big year, certainly a packed year for Sony as they continue the sales momentum. 
But now there was a bit of uncertainty thrown in there for Gran Turismo 7 yesterday for a little while, and then it was kind of turned around as we had an entire trailer kind of edited seemingly on the fly by Sony, and then a new one released, and we can actually see some of it here. But the latest trailer does mention that it is in development for 2021 as its target release here. And one other big thing to note, because this is, this is gonna come up every time, it is a PlayStation 5 exclusive. So this will not be a cross-generation game, at least according to the current commercial. As we know now, from Sony releasing PlayStation 5 exclusive target year 2021. And that is interesting because Polyphony sometimes will just, they'll just take their time. Like I was a little surprised that Gran Turismo 7 was even gonna come out next year because of that. It just, it takes a while for these Gran Turismo games to come out and that's just the way Polyphony is with it. But I do think Sony, if they show PlayStation VR 2, they're gonna use Gran Turismo 7 to showcase it. it. It makes the most sense for them. It's a game where you sit in a car or and you drive around so there's less movement needed with the controller for your character. And you can of course look around and you can make the cars look really, really good in VR. I mean, Gran Turismo Sport worked well enough, I would say with it as kind of a proof of concept for it. So I assume they will build on it with Gran Turismo 7 whenever they're ready to reveal that headset. But yeah, Gran Turismo 7 still on track for next year. Uh, just not 100% sure if it's first half or second half, but it is a PlayStation 5 exclusive. So I'm starting to think it'll fall more into the second half or even holiday season for 2021. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Roland saying, Nintendo probably thinks that every time someone plays Smash Melee, someone takes $20 out of their wallet. So. Here's a question I have for you guys. Do you think Nintendo will ever revisit Smash Melee because we've talked about GameCube games being a potential for this Nintendo Switch online service in the future? Would Nintendo go back and get Melee? Because my concern with that is while they could add online play to it, it probably won't be what we see with Slippy, right? Like they, they've had a hard time getting the online correct for Smash just at all, like ever. So I, I don't have a lot of confidence that it would even be used in a tournament setting to bring it back, but people would still get together locally and play it. However, there would probably be a lot of scrutiny placed on this, this emulation or port job done by Nintendo to where people might not even like it because it's not up to a certain standard that they have with the GameCube version. So I think it'd be great on like a like a casual level, like, oh, cool, Melee, I'll, I'll check it out. It's been a while, uh, but I don't know if it would actually pop up in a lot of tournament scenes and have a lot of excitement around it because most likely the expectations for it would be very, very high. And we just saw what they did with Mario 3D Collection. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit the like button, really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today, whether it is Nintendo sending a cease and desist order for the Eticon Joy-Con controllers, attempting to raise money for charity around mental health. Let me know what you think about that situation. And then what about those PlayStation 5 shells and those PlayStation 5 custom face plates? Do you think it's gonna go through or do you think Sony once again is gonna swoop in and shut it all down again. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.